It's a beautiful sunny morning in February here in the Bay Area, California. I'm very excited about a trip I'm taking through these beautiful hills and windmills to get to Frog Hollow Farms in Brentwood, California. This is not any ordinary fruit farm. I've always admired how they produce great quality organic fruit using sustainable practices. They make tons of compost each year and feed it right back to their fruit trees. They invest in creating the best soil and in turn that provides the best growing conditions for their trees. The end result is some of the sweetest, best tasting fruit you will ever eat. They let the fruits hang on the trees as long as possible and hand pick all their fruits when they are perfectly ripe. All of these practices are the reason why they have the most flavorful and best tasting fruits. Now, the reason why I'm going to this farm today is to collect science of one of their best tasting peaches, the Calred peach. I'm going to be uh, taking these science back to my home and I'm going to be grafting them on a rootstock to make my own Calred peach tree. So this is one of the most exciting days for me. Okay, so I'm Farmer Al at Frog Hollow Farm and today here at Frog Hollow Farm we have a, a, a very um, a visitor who's very passionate about fruit. Uh, she's a fruit lover and she has a, a fruit tree garden around her house. Now I'm going to be showing Jaya our compost operation. And our compost combines things like woody material, which is carbon, with nitrogenous material, nitrogen, and that would be our horse bedding. And another good source of nitrogen is the coffee. And there's a, there's a coffee pile right there. You can see how black it is. That, mm -hmm. that coffee comes to us from Blue Bottle Coffee Bottling Company in Berkeley. So this, Jaya, this is a, this is a compost this one closest to me is is a is a finished compost that, that that's ready to be spread in the orchard that larger pile behind me is a brand new pile we just started mixing we just started composting we we turned it the for the first time earlier this week and when you turn it for the first time that's when you're combining the materials the carbon and the nitrogen and then we also add fruit for sugar and that's what gets the microbes really started um, decomposing all mm -hmm. that uh, all that organic matter mm -hmm. and making compost out of it. So these this is our very first mulberry planting. These, these were planted in 2016, and the trees are already about thir about uh, 16 or 18 feet tall. So four year old trees, but yep. you they they set a full full size crop. They will set a full crop. Wow. 16, 17, 18. This will be. This will be their fifth growing season. The trees are four years old, but they're going into their fifth year. And yeah, we'll probably have a, a, a pretty heavy crop this year. Are all of these mulberries? All of these ones to the to the right of, of us are mulberries, yeah. So we're approaching the Cal Red Orchard, my new Cal Red Orchard. And um, um, we're gonna be cutting some wood for you to take back home with you to graft to graft in your backyard and make your own cow red tree. Awesome, I'm super excited about this. <laughs> nice straight wood. That's one branch. And get you another one. I think I'll grab my branch from over. Oh, here we go. Okay, that should do it. Um, so how many acres is your uh, farm? We're farming a total of 280 acres right now. Wow, wow. And is it um, a lot of stone fruits? We have, uh, we have, we're picking fruits 
pretty much 12 months out of the year now here in Brentwood. Wow. Um, but it's mostly stone fruit, yes. Stone fruit would be starting with cherries and then going into apricots, peaches, nectarines, and plums. Those are the five major stone fruits. Pluots is like, well, like a plum. Um, a pluot is a plum apricot hybrid. Uh, so then we also grow uh, fruits that ripen in the fall, like apples. We call those pome fruits, P-O-M-E. Mm. Pome fruits are uh, fruits with small seeds like, uh, like the apples have. So we have, we have um, pears and apples. We have pom uh, and uh, pomegranate. It's not a pome fruit. It's a completely different kind of fruit. So pear and apples are two major pome fruits. And we also have persimmons, pomegranates, quince. Um, we grow uh, mandarins. Uh, we grow Meyer lemons. We grow blood oranges. Uh, right now we're picking blood oranges and we have blood oranges available. Um, we also grow olives for olive oil. Wow. Nice. So we're harvesting something just about every month of the year. Do you also sell dried fruits? We sell dried fruits um, at farmers markets online. Um, or if you're a member of our CSA, we you can add them onto your CSA box. Uh, we have dried peaches, dried nectarines, dried plums, and dried cherries and dried apricots, all, all of the stone fruits. What's your favorite peach? My favorite peach by far is the Cal Red. Cal Red? Yeah. What about your favorite nectarine? My favorite nectarine would be Ruby Grand. Okay. Probably. I also like Summer Fire a lot, um, and uh, Fantasia and Flavor Top. If you get a good Fantasia and Flavor Top, you're, those are amazing. Okay. Uh, my favorite apricot would be, I like the Golden Sweet, but I have a new mm -hmm. favorite, mm -hmm. and that is called Gosh and Gold. That's, I've never heard of that one. That's a brand new one. You're going to love it. So uh, your entire 200-something acres is all organic? Yes, it is. Wow. Is, is, how, do you, how do you manage to keep it organic? Well, I mean, it's, it's definitely hard. It's, a hard. it's a lot more work than conventional. Uh, for us, probably the most difficult challenge is controlling our weeds. As you can see, we let the cover crop, we call it, we call it cover crop, we don't call it weeds. The cover crop grows everywhere, but in the summertime, <clears throat> when, when these, uh, when these competing um, cover crops, well, I'll call them weeds, because when, they, you know, in the summertime, they are kind of a weed, they're something we don't want. So we, we mow them by hand with, uh, with weed whackers, just kind of a garden tool that everybody Mm -hmm. has in their backyard that's how we take care of it so we we basically mow it which 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 we which actually gives you the added benefit of having that mulch right on top of your soil it keeps the soil cooler in the summer mm -hmm. uh, it keeps the it keeps the water from evaporating out of the soil it protects mm -hmm. the water supply a lot better it keeps uh, keeps the moisture in there uh, it provides it provides organic matter on top of the soil which is good for the microbes and it also um, provides it provides organic matter. It, it makes the soil richer. So there's a lot of reasons why having a why mowing is, is makes more sense for organic farmers than mm -hmm. than than just killing the weeds. And and uh, but mowing's expensive, and so it's you know mm -hmm. it takes a lot more effort mm -hmm. to be an organic farmer. As far as pest control. Uh, most of the weeds that most of the I mean most of the insects that bother us here in California are quite easily managed through um, organic systems. The biggest nemesis of organic farmers is yeah. is uh, for stone fruit growers it's a brown rot uh, uh, blossom blight. That mm. that's where where you have a weather event like a warm storm. Where you have a lot of moisture, but a lot of but warm temperatures, you know, mm -hmm. like in the 50s, and um, that would cause all of your blossoms to get this fungal, a, a fungal uh, disease called brown rot, mm -hmm. 
the 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 brown rot would consume the flower in a matter of two three days, and your crop would be ruined. These are the Warren Pears Jaya. These are one of our best tasting varieties. Chefs love it. It's they're wonderful for for making for baking. They're they're good for braising. They're good for uh, poaching. Uh, they're great for putting in salads, just fresh, just sliced up fresh. You can eat the skin. The skin's not gritty like other pears. It's like very smooth and thin. Um, yeah, it's just, and it's very high, very high bricks. Thanks to farmer Al at Frog Hollow Farms for the tour of his amazing orchard and sharing with us tips on growing fruit trees organically. The link to his website is listed in the description box below. Thank you for watching.